Um, yes, putting in progress. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, well, it looks like uh, uh, John uh, voted with his feet. Oh, there he is. He's back. <laughs> Don't take it first. I just have the uh, camera off because I have wicked sun glare behind me. So, all right, that's fine. Um, we've got a couple of things uh, to uh, uh, consider with the DPW project, the paving and um, the generator. Um, both are ripe for consideration. So um, let's start with the paving. Dave, do you want to explain to us what it is that we have. And Kim, can you put it up on the screen? Um, sure, you want the memo that Jim sent? Good. Um, let me just find that, hold on. Can everybody see that? Yep. Yep. All right, so basically the, um, the price is $66,605 with a 10% contingency. Uh, the contingency is for the tag coat on the project. Um, they couldn't set the price and it, it's even that on the, um, the road bidding that we have because the prices are so up and down and they can't carry a large amount of it at their site, they bid it out. So that's what the contingency is. Um, they said it, we might not use any of it, but they put it in there just in case because prices are so fluctuating. Could it could it fluctuate more than this? Could it, could it go higher? They said they haven't seen it go more than 10%. So I, I don't, I would imagine that that would be it, but I honestly, they didn't say in the contract whether it could go or higher or not. Well, since there are two parties to a contract, Dave, um, this party to the contract, speaking personally, would authorize you, if the rest of the committee so uh, voted, to not exceed that amount. Yeah. So, well, um, the contract is signed with the 10% contingency, so I can't imagine it would go over that. When you say the contract is signed with the contingency, is that for all of the paving that the town that's is? That's all the paving. It's a complete contract bid for all, for everything, all for right. the paving and everything. So, um, Craig, um, can you relate to us uh, what, if anything, the select board has said about this portion of the, pro of the, of the project? Did, you, did the select board approve it contingent upon our consideration or not, or? The, the 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 paving of the DPW, yes, it was included in the bid and in the project subject to your approval of the bid. Um, we didn't have a discussion about the 10% contingency of what it covered. We were just told there was a 10% contingency in the contract, but uh, but that's um, that makes sense. So um, so no, it, if this is approved, we've already approved the contracts to to go forward once you give your approval for it. Wayne, if I can jump in. Sure. So, I mean, this this is a, it, it's a lighter weight uh, product, you know, as opposed to asphalt. So it, it's kind of tied to the to the fuel prices. It's, you know, they, the distillates that they make gas out of and they go down to asphalt. Asphalt is the bottom of the barrel. You know, they can't, they can't decide what it's going to be. It's going to be whatever the market price is. So I can't, I can't give someone a hard time, you know, for, going at market price. Uh, understood, Rich, but uh, do you have thoughts about whether or not you want to authorize um, up to this amount or more than this amount? Or why don't we do it not to exceed? And why don't we, why don't we, you know, what if we, we, I mean, we have money in the budget. What if we doubled it? I mean, I can't imagine it to go up to, or, or added another 3000, whatever that would be. My, you know, that my, my suggestion, I'm sorry, my suggestion would be leave it at the at this price. And if it's an overage, you consider it at that moment only because we've already basically approved a contract that has this and several hundred, hundreds of thousands of extra dollars in it. So I wouldn't want to amend that contract at this moment with them. But if there's an overage, we can certainly address it later. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, 
I'm thinking that the I'm thinking that the, the you know the prices at this point in time, you know, gas prices have kind of leveled out. I'm I'm hoping that this would stay the same. Is my my economic guess that puts me into into a different field? But <laughs> well, let, let's talk about that, uh, Dave. Yep. When, when would you contemplate this work being done? Um, they had stopped by last week, and um, he's he's stopped by and looked at all of the roads and everything. Um, he was glad that the parking lot is ready to be paved. Um, he did not give me a date. He looked at it to be able to put it on the schedule and squeeze it in. He's going to do the parking lot before he does the roads because the roads he has to grind and everything else. But um, with the road being a smaller project, they can get it done, everything in a day. Um, he, he, he told me, the only thing he did tell me is when he gets it within a week, he will let me know when it's on the on the schedule. All right. So yeah. you're so you're ready to go when he is. Is that yeah accurate? Yeah. All right. When? Then why don't we? Why doesn't somebody make a motion? Can I ask a question. You certainly may. If we go with not to exceed, does that include the contingency? I think you'd have to do that. As, yeah. as long yeah. as the contingency is is uh, subject to actually being incurred, um, right. Right. Th then we we could reduce the amount if, if it was not incurred. And my concern was uh, in the point that Rich was talking about is, would we do something in the event that it would go over and Craig already um, addressed that. May I say something else too? Sorry if I interrupted. Um, CONCOM had um, also su not suggested, told us that we have to put the silt sock back on. I mean, it's, it's not part of this contract, but it is part of the paving. Um, so I did get a quote for everything he wanted. I wrote him a letter today, hoping that I can at least cut the, um, the silt socks in half and just put it in the lower section of the parking lot but um so far right now is if he wants everything done the bid price i got is six hundred and seven dollars and twenty cents well who are, you, who are you talking about dave is it Com the conservation Com commission yes okay all right wayne uh, yes jim uh can i just clarify um I think we're actually authorizing a payment from the DPW project budget. The contract for the paving work is really between the town and the contractor, if I'm not mistaken. So I think we're, we're authorizing payment from this project of not to exceed 73,265.50. Right, correct. This would be the payment from this project to the DPW, right. to the, the paving fund, basically. And if it goes over, it's possible that the town could foot the bill. It's just that it wouldn't go. We wouldn't pay any more out of this project without further authorization from PBC, I believe. Right. And, and the 10 percent wasn't shown on a line by line item. It was 10 okay. percent of the total multi hundred thousand dollar paving bid. So um, if if this is done first and the prices are high because gas prices are high, maybe towards the end of the project or lower. So we'll we'll have to okay. see how the whole project comes in and see how it balances out. Then Wayne, can I ask your question? Silt socks. Sorry, Rich. Do we have to put the silt socks in this bid I'm looking at? No. No, it's not part of the bid. It's just part of the paving project. Oh, so a separate item. Yes. Uh, um, if, was there any cost savings in the um, in the initial bid? I know there was there was a couple of different line items because I was there was a bunch of line items in there. So you had um, curbs that. I don't know if we're doing, we had, you know, are there additional monies in the budget that would be considered to be used for paving that we didn't necessarily, you know, capture in this, this, this number here. That came out of Kim's budget. The berm is in, in this, in this price here um, for the outer edge of the, the project. So the berm is in this price. But any other paving beyond the parking lot is not. So, Rich, uh, I am not sure I understand the question you're asking, but I'll 
I'll attempt to respond. Uh, Kim's budget was based off the PM and C estimate. So we just, we, um, we just took um, line items from that to create budgetary items. Um, uh, they don't necessarily sync up with, with what this proposal is. Okay, that's that was what I I saw. You know, different different line items in there, and right. one was curbs, and you know, it, it looked like um, you know, it looked like there was extra monies that weren't necessarily being captured in this bid here. Well, there certainly are 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 budgetary items that look like they will not be incurred um, based based on the PM and C estimate from a years you know two years ago. So there may be additional money that could be used towards this. If needed, yeah. Okay. All right, well, I make a motion and uh, that we approve the amount of 73,265.50 for paving of the uh, DPW parking lot. And I, I don't know if I, I'm not gonna make a, um, um, a, um, the cap on it um, for the liquid asphalt price. Second. I, I'm not. I'm not following you. Can you clarify that last comment? I. I this is not a. Th I'm going to approve the bid as it is with a 10% contingency, um, um, uh, and hopefully the, the the cost of the asphalt will not exceed that. Okay, but. Just, just for clarity, your proposal uh, for the committee to consider is to approve the seventy-three thousand two hundred sixty-five dollars and fifty cents for paving of the DPW lot. Correct. And like Craig said, if if it comes up that they the for some reason the liquid asphalt comes up over, we'll reconsider it later. Right. So Kim, Kim, do you have that? I'm sorry, what was the total amount you broke up just a little bit there? 73,265. Thank you. That, that's what I was making sure. Yeah, that, that amount would cover what we have assumed would be coming out of this budget. Yeah. Yeah. Do I have a second? I did before. I'll do it again. Second. All right. Any further discussion? Uh, by roll call, Diane Germain, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. John Larkin? Aye. Jim McCaffrey? Aye. Rich Nichols? Aye. Wayne Clocko votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. All right. Dave, let your person know that they better strike while the, uh, while the uh, gas prices are hot. <laughs> Will do. All right. So now, um, uh, Kim, can you, the next order of business is uh, an item we've uh, considered or discussed uh, several times previously is the, uh, the proposal for the generator for the vehicle uh, service building. <clears throat> um, Jim McKay has submitted um, this memo that outlines um, the generator, the electrical installation, the gas service hookup. Um, is there anything else, Dave, that you're aware of that um, uh, might be incurred in relation to this uh, this uh, proposed uh, uh, expense? The, well, I do actually see on this um, because the gas company will bring the gas to the generator, but I, I am almost positive they will not hook it to the generator. So um, there may be a small plumber's fee on that to hook just to connect it to the generator. Okay. All right. Um, I was um, in relation to the uh, the uh, uh, commentary at the bottom there, um, where it says the reason need for a mechanics bay 24 seven. 
Uh, I'm sure you've all had a chance to look at that on your own. Um, uh, I went to the um, building today. I visited with Dave Ramachi. I wanted to see what uh, what the current situation is. Uh, the uh, mechanic is operating in both buildings. Um, um, what I also confirmed with Dave today is that in the um, in the event of a power outage, the mechanic would still have access to the lift and the equipment and the ability to um, service vehicles uh, in the in the existing original facility uh, that is serviced by a natural gas fire generator and that um, would provide uninterrupted service for vehicle repair. Um, what we're talking about here is whether we would incur this cost for the period of time um, that there was no power um, in order to wash vehicles. That is, as I understand it, the only operational effect um, that a, a power outage would have on on DPW operations. Is that is that a fair recitation, Dave? Well, and like I told you when you're there, um, all small mechanic, all the small equipment is in the other garage. So. Um, welders, tire machine, all that, that will, is in the other garage. Um, like I said, it, it, it can be done. And I explained that to you as well. It, it can be done. It, but to, to make both garages, to make the Mechanics Bay operational that was built, then. May, may I make a comment for this moment? I think that um, Dave's in a difficult position. I mean, his, I am. Boss, <laughs> his boss has written a, uh, a, uh, a note that explains it. I think we need to take that at face value and assess whether Wayne's view of it is correct or not. I would not put Dave in a position to uh, go any further. Just because can it's I ask difficult a question? When, you, uh, when it's your boss in this situation. Yeah, Craig, uh, can I ask a question? From, from my yes. recollection of the last meeting, um, the reason that they wanted the um, generator for that building was for the to lift the big trucks. Yeah. My understanding, the the new lift doesn't have the capability of being able to lift the big trucks, and that was the whole driving force behind asking for that um, to um, you know be able to use that lift. Um, so that that was my understanding of why you know they were asking for that. It wasn't that they couldn't do work on the smaller trucks. It was the big trucks they couldn't lift with the, with the, um, with the new, with the new lift in the new garage, just didn't have the capability. So they can lift the large trucks in the existing old garage without a generator. They would need a generator in the new garage to lift the small trucks. No, I'm they not a voting to, member. I'm just asking questions yeah, here. You know, my I, understanding is they needed the generator to run the lift in the old garage. Is what I what I understood from the last meeting. Now I could be wrong, but that no, was are, I don't want to say you're wrong, but the, the 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 old garage is run off the same generator that is run the the new shop building. That that garage has the the generator that originally came with they actually ran the power through that garage through that transfer switch to the dpw building the staff staff building so the 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 large truck lift in the old building can be used with our existing generator. Ex yes okay well that was that was not what i understood so that's, uh, no that's not, nor did i i agree with rich i thought it was a question of powering the new building so that they could lift the trucks up and do everything they needed to do. 
now that a lot of the stuff is in the new garage and i told wayne this and i'm i'm not fighting either way like it was said i i'm stuck in the middle and i'll just explain <laughs> and you guys can decide um work can be done in the old building during a powder outage getting the new building a lot of the stuff that was in the old garage is now in the new building so welding uh tire machine stuff like that will not be able to done if there's a long power outage um and like i said stuff can be done everything cannot um if there's a power outage in a snowstorm and there's a truck that needs working on, is it one of the trucks that would require the big lift or would most of our, it would, it would, I mean, we, we run everything. So it would, I mean, last winter we had four garage, four trucks down and we had trucks everywhere. So we even had trucks on the floor in the new building. So in, in both bays, both the wash bay and the mechanics bay doing mechanic work and the big lift was being used. Um, the middle of the garage is being used. Um, it's, you know, stuff breaks and, and it's not always a quick break either. You could have four trucks in there with just being all frozen up and need to be thawed out and taken up space. So I, we, we did use both garages last, last winter. So I'm having a hard time understanding what the new generator's primary purpose is. Is it to power a lift? Is it to? It's to power the new mechanics bay that you had built. Well, it's, it's both, Dave. It's, it's the mechanics bay and the wash bay, correct? Yeah, yeah that, that building, that whole building. The whole building. Yeah. Oh, well, Dave, it, it was a three or four day power outage, the doors in that new building can't be open and closed, right? They, they, they can, they can be, mechanically, they can be mechanically open, yeah. Okay. And again, don't, I mean, I'm just stating the facts. I'm not, I'm just I'm not gonna, yeah. Just yeah. Say stuff that's not, you know, I'm stating the facts. <laughs> if you could just tell it, yeah, I think that's the big thing to answer <laughs> the questions that, you, that, that are there that we have without taking a position on what you think should happen. I think that's the best bet since your boss has stated his opinion. <laughs> well, and I told Wayne too, Jim has fought for everything I've asked for. This is something he wanted. I'm, you know, I'm. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna not say he doesn't deserve it. So I don't think it's a question of anybody deserving it. We have to decide. Exactly. I, I, I understand. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. But I think we deserve a, a catered uh, slick board meeting. <laughs> <laughs> we is Please. there is there anything else that we need to um, discuss to understand what the issue is, or have we? Have we, do we all have a, an understanding of what the ask is here? And, and I have a question, Wayne. All right. If we do not approve this generator, what's the risk to the DPW operation? Dave, I don't see a target on you, but it's kind of you again. I, yeah, I expected that. Um, there, there. It, like I said, work can be done. Is it, it a question like it of efficiency? Convenient. It wouldn't be as convenient or easy to do because the tools. It, exactly, and like I said, uh, it's not but, like one thing breaks. We, we, we use everything we have as much as we can. Uh, Wayne, Jim. Yeah, I just, I guess, from my perspective, and I'm probably the least ca capable of understanding all this. Um, I'm having a hard time uh, delivering a building uh, for whatever we spent, knowing that in the event of a substantial or sustained power outage, we wouldn't be able to use it. That just doesn't make sense to me. 
Um, we spent a lot of money on this. And sure, there's all kinds of workarounds. I mean, we've got to continue to work around without having any new building at all. But at this point, I think we should have that new building up and running 24 seven, irrespective of power outages. And the way to do it is to approve the generator. That's the way I look at it. Um, why don't you make a motion then? Uh, well, then I would make the motion that we approve the um, proposal to install a generator in the, uh, um, the new service building in the amount of $65,970. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Was that Rich that seconded? I'm sorry, I was looking down. Yep. Yep, okay. Uh, by roll, Diane Germain, how do you vote? Aye. Uh, Rich Nichols, how do you vote? Aye. John Larkin, how do you vote? Aye. Jim McCaffrey, how do you vote? Aye. Aye. You Two only eyes. get one vote, Joe. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Can't vote <laughs> uh, Wayne Clacko votes aye. Motion carries unanimously. Anything else that we need to consider in relation to the DPW project? Do we have any other outstanding bills? Are we ready to? Oh, yeah, like we I do. Said the, the only other one. The, wall. the what? The bubbles in the wall. Oh, oh. Yeah. There's probably a technical term for it. I like <laughs> my version. <laughs> they have not changed. Uh, I showed Wayne today. They have not changed. Um, so um, they have not come up with a solution. The only solution they had was to drill it and um, or take it all down. Um, but they have not, they said they wanted to, to watch it and see if it, it got worse. So it's, I don't know how you guys want to proceed with that. There's a couple other issues here and there, um, doors and stuff like that. They've been there to fix when I've called them. So, um, but I can write to Nick and see if that's moved any further. Well, Dave, um, we, we wrote a letter or the architect wrote a letter to yeah. Cardozi telling them that we wanted to go through, we wanted to maintain a, the warranty on that, uh, the FRP panels for a year. Yeah. Uh, because it was discovered once they were already installed. And, um, and so I think we need to, uh, I don't think there's any reason to make it, you know, many, make any kind of a decision now. I think we should go through, you know, I, I think our concern was that maybe uh, hot or cold cycles might might have an effect. We weren't sure what caused the the delamination in the first place. So uh, I think we we uh, continue to observe until um, you know the, our our twelve months uh, ends, and then we'll decide. You know, we'll evaluate uh, if there's any change, and we'll we'll speak to Cardozi at that point. Okay. Did Cardozi agree to the letter, Wayne? I saw the letter. Uh, they acknowledged that they actually had proposed something similar even before we sent the letter. Our letter was really a confirmation of what they had already um, uh, expressed was, uh, let's wait and see. I think the only difference was the length of time. And we wanted to make, we wanted to go on record that we wanted a full year. Okay. I still think they look like bubbles. Hmm. All right. Any other um, issues to consider for the DPW or we, can we let Dave go home? <laughs> Bye, Dave. Bye. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye, Thank Dave. you, Dave. All Good right. to see you. Thank you. You too. All right. Um, Next item is the senior center project. Um, we finished the last of the four focus group presentations. 
uh, it was the last one was, I believe, uh, last Wednesday um, in the uh, in the library. Well attended. Um, I would say there were probably if you if you removed the Council on Aging folks, there were probably 60 to 70 people in total there. Um, I would say non uh, Council on Aging people, um, uh, probably at least 50, 50 residents that were there. It was filmed. Um, I have not looked to see whether or not the, the, uh, uh, the recording is on the Millis Media site or not. Um, uh, usually it takes a little bit of time for them to edit and get it in a presentable format, but that should happen uh, shortly if it hasn't already happened. Um, and I believe we sent him uh, the uh, combined feedback uh, from uh, Annie Steele was distributed to all of you. And um, it's uh, in numeric and graphic form um, presents the, the, the public's view of each of the three projects. Um, it's my belief, and I'm certainly uh, interested in anybody else's opinion on this, that the Permanent Building Committee has done what it's required to do in relation to um, um, presenting the information to the public and um, getting their feedback. Um, the next responsibility I think for us is to make that information in a formal presentation to the select board. I don't believe that it is the PBC's responsibility to make a recommendation for any of the, any of the choices. Um, we presented all of these as being viable choices. They still are all viable choices whether or not um, the select board wants to entertain them in whatever fashion for consideration um, at November town meeting, I think is their decision. And so my personal feeling is that we've done our job in making, making the presentation to the community, getting their feedback and, our, and it's now our job to to present that to the select board um, uh, without making a recommendation to um, it, a preference for any of the any of the three options. And with I that, agree. I'll I'll ask I'll ask for comments. Oh, I agree, Wayne. I think uh, I think that's the best approach. There's there's three options. There's different price points. Um, not our choice to make. I think we leave it up to the public to decide what they want to do. Yeah, I, I think that that's a fair approach to select board and not leave it up to the public. But the select board will pick, to be clear, one of the or none to put on the. Uh, I won't speak for anybody on the warrant and the uh, uh, town meeting. They'll either be one of those three choices or it won't be there. That'll be a decision the select board makes. Um, I'm purposely leaving every option open. So we're not committing to anything tonight. I've learned that from Jim now. Um, but, uh, but whatever comes out of our deliberation with the three of us there based on the information you provide will be what's recommended at town meeting and uh, at the um, November, probably November elections, I would imagine. I think one piece that did come out though quite clearly was no matter what comes out of this as far as the building, um, I think that additional funding for services was a critical issue. Um, whether it's just, even if it's services in the same facility, I, that was a common theme that I kept hearing that services are wanting, we need to increase the level of service, whether it's in a new building or not. So I would still, um, I think we'll also be discussing 
trying to phrase this right, Jim. We'll also be discussing whether there is a, uh, in addition to the building piece, um, the override consideration for uh, additional services. With the Hard to hear you, Craig. Uh, I, we'd also be discussing the override with or without a building component. I think all both of those pieces are uh, important considerations because services are, I kept hearing services are needed, additional services beyond the building, beyond the footprint, even those that were opposed to the building did support additional service levels. However, that may be defined and worked on later. Okay. John Larkin, any any uh, comments you'd care to share? No, I have no comment. Okay. Jim McCaffrey. Mute. Going through life as a mute. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a better approach. In any event, I think Wayne, your your position and and um, uh, which which you were, you echoed, I think, is the right way to go. Uh, it's clear that there is from the focus groups and, of course, our um, colleagues on the Council of Aging, uh, who is kind of like the content sponsor here, the feeling that we we should be in a position now to present our options to the select board. I think there's enough variation in, in uh, views in the community that indicate that we can report that to the select board um, and they can consider exactly how they wanna go forward with this. But I, I agree from my perspective, we are presenting to them three viable options with uh, substantial pros and cons on each and a cost profile. So I think the permanent building committee has, you know, executing executed its job despite the pandemic. <laughs> um, and so I, I feel very comfortable having us, our committee go and visit with the select board and have it presented that way and invite Council on Aging if they'd like to participate. I mean, but I think you're right. I, I, there's no, there's not, there's nothing, you know, what I was looking for too was an overwhelming feeling on the part of the community that, you know, the, the no project was also something we should seriously consider. And there certainly is a sentiment for that because of the cost. But from my point of view, this is a substantial sentiment in the community that some sort of solution is something that we ought to continue to pursue. And I think these are three that are certainly viable. Okay. Diane? Um, I don't disagree with Jim. I think that there is a great deal of sentiment in either direction. And the results that Annie's tabulated don't necessarily show the negatives that I've heard on social media and in talking with people. Um, people were complaining, well, if you do this, I have to move. And yet, you know, majority of the times people voted for Cassidy with a gym. So I'm not sure I understand that logic, um, but I do think it's, not up to us to make the decision. Well, uh, uh, thank you. I, I guess one other point that I would make, um, and um, I, what I said earlier, I, I believe is that the PBC has done its job by presenting the evidence for consideration to the select board. But that doesn't mean that the Council on Aging uh, doesn't have an opinion. And I don't want to um, uh, in any way interfere with uh, their ability to advocate for any of the options. I think their role is entirely different than ours. And I would, and I would envision that we would make a joint presentation, but that we would make it clear that the PBC's role was, as we've already discussed, but the Council on Aging may be in, you know, they have a different responsibility if they so choose to advocate for anything at all. Uh, any of the options, none of the options, I think, I think that's within their um, uh, area of responsibility and they, and they should so do, you know, do so. And, and to follow up on that, Wayne, I would say then, then that kicks the can down to the select board because they would have to get buy-in from 
the rest of the residents where, you know, the, the gym option, although it would be more expensive, would open it up to more residents, which could get more people to be interested in, in doing it. Um, you know, a, we could look at it from a cost perspective and go with the, the least costly um, option, but it may not get enough people interested in proceeding with the project to make it go forward. So I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. It's up to you guys, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> and my suggestion uh, to contradict Wayne just a little bit on it, I agree totally that PBC should give us the three options with the findings, our call to make in the recommendation. I would decouple with a joint presentation with the Council on Aging. I think the Council on Aging can make an advocacy presentation after yours. I just don't want it to be blurred that the um, PBC is advocating for options one, two, or three. I think you've, you've done a great job researching them presenting the information. And on the same night, after you present the three options, you sit down, Wayne, and Council on Aging gets up and advocates for whichever one they believe, or other people advocate for the ones that they believe would be a better choice. So that would be the one change that I would uh, suggest on the um, on your structure of it. Because I want you so, guys to remain neutral on it as far as which one you're recommending. All right, so based on that comment, Craig, um, I would ask that the select board advise us um, whether or not it's it's the, your combined opinion to proceed in that fashion, and and let us know when you're when you're ready to talk to us. I will bring it up at our next meeting, which is um, next. I don't know when it is, but well, at our next meeting, it's probably next week. It is next week, I believe, and um, we'll have uh, and then we'll get back to you on it, and we'll schedule. Um, your presentation as quickly as possible, because I believe there might be several advocacy presentations that come in and speak to us um, either that night or in future nights, but we'll have a this decision. This is definitely not a one and done meeting. You got that right. I, I don't believe that to be the case either. I'll see what our chair believes. See, I'm <laughs> deferring that, Jim. <laughs> yeah. but, um, but, if, but if I was a chair, I think putting aside any choice, I think this is a multiple meeting event. But I think that you guys come in, do your presentation as to what you like. We discuss it. We bring groups in either that night or on subsequent nights or both. And then uh, have a few hearings about it and then make a final recommendation. But making sure we have that final recommendation well before the end of the summer so that advocacy can begin for the November town meeting. Okay, uh, fair enough. We will, we will await your advice. All right. I'll okay. email Erin now and tell her she has a big decision to make for the night. Yeah, but I, I guess that I, I want to make sure that from our perspective as PBC, we're keeping our, um, you know, our, I guess our, the group that is the owner of this, the one that provides the services, that would provide the services, that we keep them in the loop. That's all. Say, okay, we've decided yeah. this, this is what we're going to do you know, please reach out to the select board for, you know, how they would like you to proceed or something to that effect, rather than just hoping that they hear about it. I'd rather us. Oh, no, no, we'll, we'll, we'll clearly invite them to come in as well, I'm sure. But I mean, I think that your presentation of the options needs to be separate from the advocacy groups um, advocating for the options. It can be the same night, but I just think there should be a clear break between the two. Uh, I'll send, I'll send a, uh... A message to um, our counterparts in the working group. Yeah. Um, Helen Daly, Elizabeth Derwin, Patty Ko, uh, Chris McCaffrey, and just let them know what we discussed. I think that's fine. I think that's a good way to go. All right. Are right. anything else we need to discuss in relation to the senior community center project? I, for one, am glad the focus groups are done. <laughs> uh, I am too. Um, I think uh, considering everything that we've been through, um, it was uh, really a, a, a substantial effort in order to get them done in light of the pandemic. Uh, Jim, thank you for um, uh hosting the, uh, the meeting in a room that I guess was not as conducive as we would have hoped uh, 
Plus it was packed. I mean, it was like, <laughs> it was tough room to, but it was, it was a good, it turned into a good meeting, but it was very, very well attended. Good. Well, that's, that's what we were hoping for. And, and I think we had great attendance at all of them. So um, that was mission accomplished in my opinion. All right. Let's talk about the school, middle high school project. Um, I spoke to Denise Gibbons to understand what the school committee's discussion had been up to this point. They're, they're really at the beginning stage. Um, they're talking about a, a renovation with the possibility of some additional space. Um, and I'm not sure exactly um, what the purpose of that is. Um, I had heard something about maybe special science uh, rooms, uh, uh, some additional space for special purpose. Uh, and uh, I asked about athletic fields and they were hadn't really considered um, whether or not that should be part of the project or not. My biggest concern, um, which I spent most of the time speaking to her about was how was it that they were going to come to um, a number that they were going to ask the select board for authorization to, or to, as a warrant article in November uh, to do the feasibility study? Uh, if you recall, uh, we, uh, we uh, the town voted a million dollars uh, for the Clyde Brown feasibility study uh, and uh, I'm not sure how that relates to the kind of project that um, the school committee is currently thinking about. I'm concerned and Rich and John, I would ask you as construction people, they, they were, they're talking about infrastructure, mechanical systems, heating, electrical, plumbing, um, roofs. Um, and so scoping that kind of work could be a very difficult uh, or more time sensitive or um, process for an architect to define the scope. And so I'm trying to get some kind of a feel for where would where should that number be in terms of an ask for a number for a feasibility study? So we spent some time talking about that. Uh, Denise said that she had uh, some ideas about looking at uh, other communities, what they had asked for, um, uh, looked at uh, some of the efforts uh, that they had done in previous uh, studies that they had of the facilities. And then I also encouraged her to call Compass, uh, who did the, you know, the project, uh, you know, two projects for us, uh, that they could at least give us some, some feel for what the MSBA's approach might be and what, what costs might be. So um, that's the substance of the conversation. We didn't agree on anything or disagree on anything. Um, and so I'll just stop right here and ask for reaction to that conversation. Where are they in the process, Wayne? Have they been accepted in? They've been invited. They've been invited right. to apply. Okay. And they're in the early stages of providing um, a list of things. Um, I don't have the letter. I don't know what the ask is. One of the things that is pertinent to us is they have to define the school building committee. I advised Denise that in light of the of um, the fact that the town has a permanent building committee, we are by definition um, um, the building committee. And I reminded her that um, there was some question about who was a voting member or who was not a voting member. 
And Denise um, was a voting member because Pat Sheehan was not able to serve in that function going forward. So um, uh, I'm not sure, um, you know, whether or not this moves forward, um, what any of your thoughts are about, you know, whether or not you'd want to be involved in, in that kind of a project if it is approved or not. I would assume um, uh, that you would be, but I'm not making uh, any assumptions, you know, for you, but um, we just discussed that in the briefest terms. Um, and all of that is also subject to reconsideration. Um, so that it doesn't not have to be um, decided upon today or in, you know, cast in stone. Wayne, when, when you say they've been invited to submit uh, to who state? Yes, the yeah. Massachusetts School Building Authority okay, yeah. um, allows, uh, a, my understanding is the school committee is, or the administration has applied every year. And, um, and so the first hurdle is um, after you've been, after you've applied, you have to be allowed to um, go further. And yeah. they've, they've been allowed to take this next step. Okay. And the I next step, and, and then I'm, I'm sorry, just one other thing. The next step would be uh, for them to provide this information and then make their proposal for a feasibility study. The town would have to approve those funds. Um, uh, and then the MSBA would decide whether or not they actually want to proceed. So the town would actually have to agree to fund uh, the first phase, the feasibility study for the MSBA to go further. So basically, basically at this point, you're looking for a, what's the number you would use for a feasibility study? Correct, yeah. correct. And the feasibility study is pretty much a perfunctory application that's been filed every year since, well, before Clyde Brown started. I mean, and then you get invited in at some point when you get high enough on the school, on the right. state list. So it's, it's not like we applied on our first go round and got it. We've been after this thing. I think even before we did Clyde Brown, I've been applying for the high school. So um, when these well, opportunities come along, you kind of have to act on them. So to refresh your recollection and to, and to your point, Craig, the Clyde Brown project um, was presented to Millis by the MSBA because another town that had been in the queue did not vote to, to fund the feasibility studies. So they had a vacancy. And, and if you think about the MSBA, they're money managers. They have a fund that they're interested in in doing projects. And so they were looking for somebody that had a project of a similar size that would be ready to act. And so Millis was presented with that option and we took it. Um, and so that's kind of, not that, you know, there was a vacancy, but we are presented with this opportunity and we have to decide if we're going to take it. So that's the question. I, and I think it's a good idea to talk to uh, Compass or whoever else to find out how much a feasibility study mm -hmm. estimate might be. So we do have to put a placeholder in there that's accurate. <laughs> well, it's it's one that we have to live with. Right, exactly. <laughs> I like it. I like living with accurate. <laughs> yeah, I think the, uh, I, you know, the feasibility study, they're going to look to see um, you know, independent view of what we need to do and Unfortunately, that's the way that uh, these projects are done. So I think that's the first step and we have to do what we did with Clyde Brown and make that first leap. Here, and, here's, and the, you, oh, go ahead, Mike. here's the difficulty that I have with that, Rich, is I don't have a clear understanding of what it is that they want to do. Hmm. That's, that's, you know, when the Clyde Brown project uh, was kind of defined for us. It was going to be, we did look at, you know, add renos, but we knew how many square feet we needed to replace. We had the, you know, we had the student population uh, numbers. We knew how many square feet per student. And so there, there was a lot of formula that led into what it was that we would ultimately build. 
I don't have an understanding of any of that in relation to what they've what they've talked about so far. That, yeah, that's and this my... is a much more complicated one because they, there are two programs: is a renovation program and the new construction program. Well, so we are. We're in the renovation program. No, it's... we are not. We are no, in the not. capital. We are in the capital program. There is there. There's two programs. Not Craig. new construction. Yeah. We we are we are in the capital program, which includes new construction and substantial renovation. The other one, it, they call it the quick or fast, and and those systems have to be thirty years old or older, um, and relate I think to roofs and mechanicals only. And so so there's only two options, and they didn't qualify for that that That's renovation good. option. But I, I don't think there's any discussion of building a new school. I, th I think that the, the idea of addition, but maybe the program would cover it. But I, well, I think that's what the study is going to be for. Yeah. I will just tell you this. Um, what Denise said was, um, you know, if we get through the feasibility study and the recommendation is that it is more cost effective or whatever to build a new school, they would consider that. Now, I'll tell you that at, uh, you know, what the price of construction is and $600 a square foot and a couple hundred thousand square foot facility, you're talking, you know, potentially a, a nine figure number here. Yeah. Yes. And I think that, yeah, I mean, we've, the conversations that I'd had prior to this, and you've had the most recent one, obviously, was that there was not a big appetite on anybody's mind to build new. It was mostly fix and expand. So I think that's the start, because I don't think anybody believes there'll be an appetite to pass a nine figure override. Right. When and, when and Craig, how do we consult? I mean, we'll somehow, as the committee, we have to consolidate whatever the opinions are to come, like you were saying, Wayne, to come out with, you know, what are we doing? Um, you know, because without a defined scope, we, you know, we're not going to go anywhere. So uh, Denise is the school committee representative in charge of in charge of this process. Uh, it's my understanding that she's going to make some effort. Um, I've offered her um, to assist in any way that we can. Uh, but it's my understanding, Rich, that um, this is something that they're going to do on their own. So they're they're going to come up with a number uh, to present um, as a warrant article for November. Wayne, the number number is the number for the study, right? Right. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So that's fine and dandy. Um, I think there's some real governance issues here. You may recall that the appointing authority for the building, the uh, Clyde Brown Building Committee was the select board, not the school committee. Right. So I think that it's important for, if we think it's, well, let me just say it differently. I think there's some uh, value in the PBC, you know, referring to the select board to say, okay, we have, a, we have a responsibility here as the PBC, it's set forth in the bylaws of the town um, you know, we're happy to get involved here because we think it's our job. Um, but, you know, we're going to need the select board to give us some direction. Um, and, you know, let, let's face it, this is potentially an explosive thing. Let's just put it right out there. Um, so to not do it right is a big mistake. Was the, was the PBC involved in the, in the, application, the million dollars we spent on the design. I know once the million dollars is voted and done, the PVC and the school building commission, uh, committee got heavily involved in it. Um, I was serving right then. I don't recall our involvement leading up to the feasibility study vote last on the school. I, I just don't recall if we were involved at all or if that was, it seems a million dollars is a number they had hard and fast from someplace. I don't know where they got it, but That's that number true. was, I'm sorry. Tetra -tech. Tetra -tech. Yeah. So, so they had some number. I, 
but I don't disagree with you. Once it gets to the point that the feasibility study has been approved, then you're right, Jim. It's the select board's the appointing authority, and we learned that on the last project. Right. It's it's what level of involvement is appropriate or involved by the PVC or anybody until we get a town meeting vote on the um, on the um, on the feasibility study. Um, I think they'd be silly not to listen to some expertise on this from various people on this committee. Um, but I don't know what official authority, and I can check. I'll, I'll, I'll ask, I'll, I'll do some digging on that myself. Um, what, what official authority there is until the feasibility study starts. Once the feasibility is approved and funded, then it's clear the path we have to go because we did that with the Clyde Brown. We, we right. know that we have to put the select board appoints the authority, appoints the committee, um, all that happens. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, and, and Craig, I certainly recall interviewing uh, firms. The first one was the project manager, where we selected right. Compass. Uh, so we, you know, we did that whole uh, selection uh, process for that, and then did the same thing for the architect. Uh, but I don't have a recollection of what preceded that, and whether or not we were involved in. Yeah, uh, determining the million dollars and and how that all worked. I just I just don't recall. I, I, I agree. I at that moment, we're involved. I don't think I don't think the PBC was because I was involved in the finance committee. So I remember the motion to fund the study, but um, but that was put forward by the school. You know, the study funding was put forward by the school. But I, I agree. Once if the study for whatever amount passes and it is funded, the day after that passes, we should start work on forming a school building committee and go down that path. Wayne, Wayne, I agree with you that, you know, for Gibbons anyways, uh, the recommendation to talk to Compass is an excellent recommendation. And if we got direction from the select board, would we be well advised to talk to Compass? Well, that's, that's where it's going to be difficult to know what the select board is capable of recommending on when this is a school project and there is that separation of church and state and school and town. So school and municipal. So I don't know, and this is a question I'll, I'll, I'll ask and, and dig on, at what level of involvement do we have by statute, statute and what level do we have by being helpful and good neighbors and experts in the area? Well, well the question is gonna be, who's gonna sign the contract? Who's gonna let the contract sign it? Right. And that would be the select board that would do that. It's so the, we, it's the board, right. So, so I, I, mean, I would, can't hide, buddy. No, I would personally, I, I, I know, I'm just saying, I would personally like to make sure we have the right amount on that contract. Yeah. So, and I will have conversations towards that end. But I don't know that we can mandate um, who's involved on developing the scope of work. But if I don't have comfort in the level of the, um, well, if the level's wrong, if they come forward with the wrong level at the November town meeting and nobody bids on the job, then that solves my problem of signing it. Right, clearly right. low ball. But um, then well, there's, we, a point when it's, there's a point where it becomes crystal clear what has to happen. And there's a point leading up to that where we're in this mud, you know? So Craig, we made the offer to help in any way that we can, yeah. whether or not it's, you know, within our uh, purview, uh, you know, whose authority it is, um, we've made the offer to assist. Um, I think, uh, you know, I am certain that the school committee uh, would want to see this go forward. This is something that they've applied for every yeah. year. And, and so, I, you know, their interest is for success to see this happen. So, you know, I'm not sure, you know, whether or not this is going to be a territorial kind of issue or not, but we've, we've certainly made the offer to assist. Yeah, and, and I think that makes sense. I think that's the I think that's what's needed. And I agree with you. I'm just saying I don't think we have the ability to force anything. Hopefully they'll realize the good faith offer that it is and 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 accept it and work together collaboratively. Okay. All right. Any other questions, comments? Anything else we need to discuss tonight before we uh, pay some bills? We don't have any bills, but we do have minutes. Even better. As a non voting member, then I'm going to sit silently. <laughs> All right. So we have minutes from April 19th. 
Make a motion to approve the minutes from April 19th. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Diane Germain, how do you vote? Aye. Jim McCaffrey? Aye. Rich Nichols? Aye. John Larkin? Aye. Wayne Clocko votes aye. Craig, select people in the past have voted on, on these issues. I, I was that. told it was a non-voting position, but I vote aye on the minutes. They were lovely. My name was spelled <laughs> right. I'm fine with it. <laughs> Don't write that down, Kim. I'm writing that down. <laughs> You tell me I can vote, I'll vote. <laughs> Chicago way, often and... Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Early and often. Yeah. All right. Uh, with that, uh, motion to adjourn? Second. Second. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. And again, Goodbye. I'll vote on that. Agree. Yes. <laughs> Thank yes. you. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, all. Good night, all.